Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Sherry Unshrunken. And tonight I am going to do another movie review. Now, I'm sure that everybody else out there knows that Netflix has really been given the box office a run for their money. And they've really been doing their thing. They've been putting out some pretty serious films and they've been using some pretty heavy hitting actors. So the film that I'm going to review is called Napoli Ever After and the main character Violet Jones is played by Sonia Lathan. Now Sonia Lathan is this really big marketing executive in pursuit of the perfect life. Now she always has to look perfect head to toe, right? And she's already got the perfect job, the perfect house, and the perfect boyfriend. Now the only thing she needs to make her perfect life complete is to get the perfect husband. Now just when Violet thinks she's on the verge of getting everything she ever wanted, on the night of her anticipated proposal, her boyfriend, instead of giving her a ring in front of all of her family and friends, he gives her a dog. Now when things don't go as planned, she tailspins into this existential crisis, which leads her to do of all things, shave her head. But then this leads her to embark on an unexpected journey of beautiful self-discovery. So if you're a Sonia Lathan fan like I am, or a fan of another movie that she did a few years back called Something New, you'll love this film because it touches on some of the same sensitive subject matter regarding black women and the challenges that they face. Now in this case, the focus is on black women and the unique relationship that they have with their hair. Now I can say with confidence that black women have a different relationship than any other woman of any other race actually has with their hair. But what I liked about this film is that it didn't attack the subject in like an angry, preachy kind of way. And to my surprise, there were no angry black women to be found anywhere in any part of this film. It was actually pretty darn funny. It was refreshingly honest and it was very lighthearted. And kudos to the director. Her name is Haifa El Mansour. Now she is a Saudi Arabian filmmaker and she's actually one of the first from her country to ever be a filmmaker. I thought she did a really beautiful job of representing the African American female's perspective. Although I'm sure Sanaya contributed pretty heavily to that too. But she also, she and the cinematographer also did a really great job of showcasing the beauty of Atlanta. Now this made me say, Sherry, you have got to get out more because there were so many beautiful spots that I even, I've just never even had a chance to hit yet. I have got to give Sanaya some serious props because she actually shaved her head for this role. And you know, she could have gone like with a prosthetic ball route, you know, she could have taken the shortcut out of it, but she didn't. She stayed really true to this role. So I've got to give her some serious props for that because you know, traditionally African-American women are not trying to shave their heads because you know, it's all about the hair, especially for our African-American celebrities, okay? The thing that I really loved about this movie is that it reminded me that not just for African American women, but for all women, we are so much more than just our hair or anything external about us. And the power to achieve our happily ever after comes from within. Obviously, I really love this film. I gave it a solid 8.5 and definitely a two thumbs up. Now, fellas, I gotta warn you, this is a, this is a chick flick. But ladies, this is a great choice for one of those onesie wind down kind of sleepover parties. Now I actually love this movie so much that I not only did a movie review on it, I thought the subject matter was so intriguing that I actually hosted my very own wind down movie review party. And I pulled together a few of my beautiful African American lady friends of all different ages and hair textures because I wanted to see if they had the same like hair drama experiences that Violet had. So here's a little bit of what went down in our party. So one of the things that Violet said that really, that really um, was highlighted to me and really kind of stuck out for me was that she said that her hair had to be fixed. And that really kind of bothered me and I never realized that before. But obviously if her hair had to be fixed, that meant something was wrong with her hair. Right, right. So I wanted to ask the other ladies um, if they ever had to have their hair fixed like I did and like what are some of the things they did I, besides getting their hair straightened. I did used to get my hair straightened because it was curly and mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of fit in with all of my friends so mm -hmm. I did get my hair straightened. I wanted to fit in with my friends so I wanted my hair to be straight. Were your friends African American? All my friends were. I mean, the majority of my friends were African American. And all of them had straight hair? 
um, either because they got it permed or they got it straightened. Uh -huh. And I think in an effort for me to want to fit in, because my hair was curly, I did get it straight. Okay, so it's totally different than generation of us. Was that term even used? Oh, that term was used too much for me, actually. I had a problem um, identifying with my hair and looking at it and all that. Um, I had to al always get my hair fixed. I had a relaxer at four. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. And I have seen people in my family talk about people with hair that has different texture than mine. When you say talk about it, what do you mean? Like, it's not good. Okay, like and that's another thing. It. I'm glad you brought up that word, good. Good, because that's another term that African Americans use a lot about our hair, good hair and bad hair. I mean, even Beyonce was like Becky with the good hair. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> ask you, what is good hair? What is good hair? I always thought coming up, good hair was hair like this. Okay. Ah. That's what I associated mm -hmm. good hair to be. So, and when you say like that, this soft curly texture. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, and but why is that good hair though? That was that was the perception that I had. You know, like you said, getting your hair fixed. I too can relate to that Saturday morning mm -hmm. sitting in the hot chair with the hot comb right, holding right. your ears Ooh. down. We got perms at early ages. Right. Um, not as early as you, um, but I I I probably want to say maybe middle school okay is when i got my first mm -hmm, perm mm -hmm. but we all kind of had the same experience and i we were all brainwashed to think that good hair was more african was african-american hair but with more of a caucasian taste. the straighter your hair the better less kinky the better do y'all agree mm -hmm, i mean mm -hmm. And there's a term that Kiki always uses, and you know what that term is. You know what that term is, and and she she kind of taught me this term, and I started using it. Um, Kiki, what's that term that the you term use? Is preferred hair. And why is it preferred? And who prefers it? Honestly, we we all prefer it. We um have been brainwashed, but we think that that's better. We were told that it is, you know, so that's why we prefer it. It's not good hair or nothing is wrong with your hair. We don't need to fix it. We can, you know, change it. And the texture that you want is just preferred. That's all. That's why I saw it. Every form of media out there tells us that a looser, more, ca more Caucasian grade of hair is preferred. Preferred hair is a billion dollar business. That's what's in a lot of ads, you know. Um, that's what's in the marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, it is. I like it my hair. It's cool. I've, I've really grown to have a good relationship with my hair. Um, it's just not as easy to manage. And when I found out I was pregnant with a second child, I prayed that it was a boy or at least a bald-headed girl because I did not want to, I didn't want to do hair. I know I hate doing hair. And one of the reasons why I like faux hair is because it's like an art form. You can do anything with it. I mean, you can change your looks. You can have different color hair. You can have different textures. You can have different lengths. I like to interchange my hair, you know. Mm -hmm. It's interchanged right now. <laughs> All right, girl. I know that's right. <laughs> you know, and it'll be changed again later on tonight. All right. All right. <laughs> but, you know, and I think that's some of the beauty of our hair. That's right. You know, yeah. and that we're able to do right. that. And to be honest, it's just easier. And I am so super lazy. I love the hair, changing my colors. I just, I like poor hair. That's this isn't all my hair. Mm. This is, some of this is clipping hair. <laughs> it's it's decent mean, quality clipping yeah. hair, but it's clipping hair. Okay. I understand people like to be able to change their looks when they feel like it. And African-American women are known for <laughs> yeah. changing so, their looks. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with yeah. these. I mm -hmm. think they can be done tastefully. I tell them you can't have Africa in the front and India in the back. It's always look like it grew up my head. I want my friends to say, oh, your hair grew. Not, ooh, that's a badass weed. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. So many people always make reference, well, I wish I had wash and go hair. When you wear your hair natural, it's not wash and go. It's a process. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. after I wash it, it, it does poof out. You have to moisturize it. You have mm -hmm. to condition it mm -hmm. and oil it. And I, I tend to braid it at night. Dry. You have to put the moisture back in after right. you've combed it. Yeah. And African American hair is a lot of work, right? Um, and I, I hate combing hair. I hate combing my own hair. I hate dealing with my hair. I hate maintaining my hair. I think it's a lot of work because we do shy away from our natural textures. We have to do a lot to tame it, to make it um, presentable for um, the rest of society and for people who are not African-American. I've often felt like 
I was a slave to my hair. I felt so much pressure to maintain my hair and to have a certain look. I don't know, but I felt like I had to give all my money to my hair. I had to give all my time to my hair. I felt like I have had to just bow down and worship my hair. Violet on the movie, the main character, Violet, she said, I felt like my job, my hair was a second job. And I, I was like, yes, girl, yes, girl, speak that. But I have felt like that. It's a lot of work. And the line that the girl that was going through the big shop, when she was getting all her perm or her chemicals, she was in the chair and she was in the stylist chair and she was getting all of her hair chopped off and she was going natural. She said after she saw herself in her natural state with her natural hair, she was like mortified. She was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, she hated it. And the first thing she said was like, um, I hate it. And he was like, why? What is wrong with you? And she said, he said, this is the way God made you. And she said, but you know brothers like sisters with the long flowing hair. And they prefer that because that's what's put before them as a point of reference. Right. I don't believe that to they prefer. That all African American um, men oh, okay. prefer that. I think that <clears throat> we prefer attention. So we... Um, actually hold all the strength to change the way um, society perceives us. We have not taken on the courage mm -hmm. to be, you know, who we, to be our authentic selves, to be who we want to be. Yeah. Because I can relate to that. I mean, like when I'm going to the office, I feel like my hair needs to be a certain way, you know. Because it's accepted? Because yes. it's more accepted. As professional. You know, as professional. Okay. Mm -hmm. I felt like they would look at me mm -hmm. and look at my hair and automatically assume that she's not as professional or she's not as articulate mm -hmm. or she is not as knowledgeable or can't do the I job as someone I got, else. Um, braids with beads. And went to work and i can remember being called into the office and i'm, I'm at the age of 17 i'm in high i'm in high school this was a part-time job that i had and i was asked to take the braids out of my hair wow mm. this was what year about I was, approximately um 1979 1980. okay she said that she didn't feel that it was a professional in terms of the mm -hmm. image of the store and I, so there are so many things in terms of perception mm -hmm. because perception is reality right. that haven't changed with regard to us as a people right. and the manner in which we wear our hair. But as Angela said though, we have not embraced ourselves and our own authenticity. 